Okay, so let's see if we can get through 9.1. Um, so let's start off with the principal, principal planes and the principal stresses. So the first thing I would do is I would redraw this um, based upon just looking at the stresses kind of going left to right, pointing away from the body so that I incorporate any uh, negative values. Here we've both got things in tension, got 60 this direction, 100 in this direction. Now your shear stress again goes left to right or bottom to top. And here you can see it's pointing away, so this is a minus 48. So redraw them like that so that you get your, your numbers right around. Um, this is already going to give me my stress values. So principal, uh, I'm looking for principal, principal planes. Uh, so I need to calculate that. Right, so go back to your formula sheet. So I'm going to the tutorial sheet and the principal the only term that we need to work out here is is gonna be this term here. So we have two feet of P is tan inverse. minus 2 times 48, so bringing in the minus, and I've got 100, take away 60, and the inverse tan of that is So that's 67.38. That doesn't look right, I think. I think that's probably missed out a minus sign. Yes, yeah, I'm getting a negative tan. So that's minus 67.38. So your principal axis should be half of that, and then your second axis should be the 180 plus that. So let's just check that. So the first principal axis should be minus 33.67. And the second principal axis would be, um, actually it's only asking for the principal plane, so it's only asking for the first one. But the f f uh, second principal axis, if I w uh, required it, Be fifty six thirty one degrees. Um, okay, so provided we're happy with that, so we've got uh, thirty three point seven going down in this direction and fifty six going down in this direction. Okay, uh, so this looks a bit odd because you've got, you've got the uh, 60 
going off in this direction, 100 going in that direction, but the, the shear is probably going to cause our principal strain going down in this direction here. So what can we do to check that? That's, uh, that's something worth doing. So So yeah, okay, okay. So let's now work out the um, principal stresses. And then we can do our check. So we're going to work out this term here to find our principal stresses. The first one will be 160 divided by 2, so that's, four, that's 80, plus or minus, and let's now work out all of this term here. So 100 take away 60 divided by 2, square it, plus 48, square it, Take the square root of everything, and we get 52. So I should have a maximum stress here of 52 plus 80 of 132 megapascals. And here, eighty take away fifty two another stress which is both of these notice they're both uh, intense are of pulling away of twenty eight and that looks uh, not quite right looking at, at those axes there so let's just check that that's whether that's correct and what I'm going to do is I will so it's good to do a check. Take a transformation. <clears throat> so we'll take the transformation term here and we'll let this transform. Is this the way to do it? I'm thinking. No, no. no. What we what we're going to do is we're going to take this one here. Since I've got the the 56 points in this direction. Now I'm going to imagine what will happen if I take these numbers and transform that. off into this direction. Okay, we're transforming that state by 56. Going, so on these transform equations, that means you're turning, going anti-clockwise. And we're going to go 56 anti-clockwise and then see what value we're going to get. So if we get 28, we know for sure we're correct. That is the uh, 28 direction and the other one will be the 138. So let's put that into here. So I've got 100 plus 60, divide that by 2, plus 100, take away 60, divide that by 2, times by cos. So I'm going to Rotate it anti-clockwise by 56.3 times by 2 plus, although it's a negative, so it's minus 48 times sine 
two times, and again, I'm going to rotate that by 56.3. So when you put your, your number in there, notice that that is uh, a positive, although even though you're rotating anti-clockwise. And so that equals 28 megapascals. So if I take those values, rotate them 56, this principal axis here, this x1 here, becomes uh, 28. So that's correct. So that, that is telling me, yes, I've got uh, this thing transformed in this direction. So uh, it uh, did transform correctly. So you have to be a bit careful. We've got square roots and, and whatnot. Uh, and things don't necessarily shift the direction that you, you think they're going to. So run a check at the end. Once you've found your angle, and then check that uh, um, when you're transforming, let's say your X to here, whether that's in agreement with uh, this result that you've uh, calculated using this equation. It's always good to run a check. So that's the part A done. Uh, the second part is the stress component exerted on the element by chaining, given that we're going to rotate it counter counterclockwise by 30 degrees. I've run out of space here. Uh, we're going to be using this equation and then the other one. So I'm going to be using this one here. Ooh. So I use this one here. So we're going to transform so we use both these transformation equations. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so what? are we doing here? So we, we are using the original values. So our first one will be 100 plus 60 divided by 2. Here we've got 100 take away 60 divided by 2. We're rotating it anti-clockwise by 30 degrees, which means 2 times 30 becomes 60. Again, anti-clockwise is positive. That's a negative 48. So I need to find that result. The stress components, yeah. And I need to find this result. negative minus 60 okie dokie so stick that in our calculator And what have we... Did I find principal shear stress? I didn't. Uh, so I should mention uh, the previous here. I was... I could also find the principal shear stress. And all that is is this term here. That's why it's good to keep these two terms separated. So we can just quote that. So I forgot that one, sorry. Okay, go back to part B. So 
So 100 plus 60 divided by 2 plus 20 times cos 60, take away 48 times sine 60, so that gives me 48 point four three degrees and then if you manage to save your calculation your cap button you can go back and uh, plus there you can go back and plug in your numbers again oh no I've got that right now That should, that should be minus minus and there should be a plus there. And the other one is one one point five seven. What am I putting degrees for? Megapascals. Megapascals. Right, so that's the two values of my transformed stress. Um and then how can I find the other term okay so I use the other equation should have included it while I had my chance so there we go and again, I'm going to use what I previously typed into the calculator. Change my cos for a sign. And change my Time for a cause. Okay, so that gives me minus forty one point three two megapascals. Which I think is good. Well, that should all be correct. Yeah, that's fine. So there we there we go. So that's nine point one done. 